nature of this tale. This story is rated M for mature, and we strongly encourage listener discretion and consent in gaming. Use your safety tools, people. And now, journey with us into the darkness, and farther yet below the darkness, into a realm of silence and emptiness, and finally into utter oblivion. Utter oblivion! I can talk tonight. As we continue our tale that we have changed the name to Annihilation. Why, you ask? For those who don't know, we had our wildly successful Pride Charity event two weeks ago. We raised almost $4,000 for Rainbow Railroad in seven days. And hits were made. <laughs> and for the low, low price of 750 cash dollars, Garnet must die forever. So this is where this tale is going now, descending into annihilation at the end of which this character, probably the longest lasting on the show, will burn. So, in preparation for this, tell us who you are, people, who you're playing in this tale. Since we don't have a Sarah to start us off tonight, Moon. Hi, I'm Moon, also known as Caldoon Khalil. You can find me on Twitter at, at KKhalil. I'll be playing Amble Ennui, um, a doll. Uh, and don't worry, Garnet. Um, if you know what does live forever, your money. <laughs> Legacy. Hello, I am Zachary Naldright, he, him. Uh, I am Zach Rules, uh, various social media sites. Tonight I am playing Tracy T. J. Johnson, if that is his real name anymore. Oh, that me. Haha. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Erin. <laughs> you can find me at Greg Cthulhu pretty much everywhere. I use any pronouns except he, him. Uh, tonight, I will be playing Annalise Rivers, uh, whose pronouns are she, they. And hi, I am uh, Savannah, also known online as Miss Massimo Fox, um, also known now as the aforementioned um, hit uh, that was taken out to kill my character Garnet. So by the end of this tale, she will be perma-dead, and she will not be returning in her all her gl mortal glory. I am Tyler. Elder Checkles Online. I'm binding all these victims together to burn in ecstasy in the fires of Inferno before descending into utter oblivion in the underworld. And we are Vorpal Tales, where we do terrifying tales and awesome adventures seven days a week, ten episodes well, nine now. Soon to be ten in August. Every week. The weeks were redundant. It's getting late. Somebody fire my copy editor. Wait, that's me. Shit. And now, let us return to our tale. When last we left, you had escaped the oubliettes. But not 
Metropolis itself. You were standing on black concrete with the jagged spiral twisting towers extending as far as you could see in every direction, horizon to horizon, with a black sky with roiling clouds and lightning. The lights only being the lights of the souls burning in the oubliettes. You had escaped, but barely. Some of you with less ease than others. Some of you left more of yourselves behind than others to escape. Is your memories, what's left of them, what had not been destroyed and uh, consumed by the angels, slowly return. You realize, fuck, we're dead. In Garnet's case, fuck, I'm dead again. That's three times now? Four times? And there's one extra of you, because Amble exited his oubliette with him herself. What could go wrong? Mm hmm. Absolutely nothing. The seven of you are standing there looking at the endless fields of soul torture and utter destruction and reincarnation, deciding what to do now. Well, this is a bit of a pickle. So, so you, this is, this is something that has happened to you before, uh, you, you had mentioned. So, you're the one with the experience here. I've never come here with my deaths. I've gone to the other realms. I was never so unfortunate as to be brought to Metropolis. But... You you have made your way back before. Yes. Just this What's... will be new. So, what what's this all entail exactly? Well, normally my. I make my way back to the mortal realm, but I know the path from where I normally go, so let's just find a path here. Uh, so the fields are pretty endless, correct, storyteller? Horizon to horizon of soul oubliettes, which you now know, makes you relive your memories over and over again, sucking them out one by one until you've exhausted your memories and you're an empty husk when your soul is recycled. Can I see where, so they're like, can they're stuck in the soul out somewhere. Can I see where that soul is going to like, or like the memory is going to follow it? Uh, there are, if you look closely enough, whilst you think about that question, you realize, yes, there are things moving around here, harvesting the energy in a condensed form. Oh, there we go. Reminiscent I mean... of food. We can just flag one of those down to help. I point at one of the like winged oh. things. I don't think that is a. There we are. We can just flag or... one of those things down to help. Your twin looks you in the eye as it repeats your words with the same inflection, and you forget what that idea was you just had. <laughs> um... do, do we still have our like possessions that we had when we died? Nope. You're wearing the same clothes, but you don't have gear. Oh, should we uh, roll for any of our at start of game session stuff? A hundred percent. Okay. Um, <laughs> I believe so. The entities, it looks very much like they're harvesting food. And as it slowly sinks in, this is, this is heaven. Reduced to food as your memories are stripped away. You all lose the stability. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is the afterlife. This is the good afterlife. At least that's what you were raised to believe. Um... Even me? No, not you. Sorry. No. You've lost stability for this already. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so can I see, can I try to track down how one of these harvesters exits the field? Or exits this particular plane of Metropolis? Second. Okay. 
I was checking. Hmm. Uh, side rolls. Okay. Thing you see. Things aren't like machines. They're like beings. Yeah. They... Let's just pull one down and open it up and see how it works. Our long... I got my blades on me to open anything up. They're very long and slender with delicate features, pale skin, and long, thin hair. They seem ethereal and move with a very solemn grace. They're perpetually naked. And a veil of dust spreads like a nebula around their bodies, which they seem to be doing something with it's hard to tell what from here their eyes are dark green and devoid of pupils and they are covered everywhere in long thin shallow cuts from which emanates this dust like very narrow very tall and long all the long part means long arms long legs thin torso long neck but oh, they're hot uh uh I'll send you a picture. You can decide. Sure, yeah. But DM it to me. <laughs> what page? Two eighty-four. Two eighty-four. God. So are they internally like is the are the faces coming from the things that they're harvesting then? What do you mean? If I'm looking at page 284. Uh book page 284. I don't know if that's yeah. true. Oh, sorry, 287. I can read. Oh, okay. Uh oh. if you want, and you're looking at the PDF, copy that in for anyone who doesn't have it. I mean the the Aaron the monster fucker would would you know wouldn't say <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 what could go wrong? They do have metal. It seems to be attached to the the brain stem area of the back of the neck that comes out in a circular disc, like a halo. <laughs> it's attached to their bodies. You don't know what that's for either. Tracy, you're strong. I'm pretty sure you can just rip that out of the back of their head really easily. I'll help. It is covered in runes that glow faintly. Uh, I I don't think we should uh, call attention to ourselves if at all possible. Uh, as you stand very still and actually pay attention, letting your senses adjust, you realize there are hundreds, if not thousands, of them in in these fields. Yeah. Um. So. Again, my question still stands. Is there a way for us to track how they exit this plane, uh, like this field? Oh, no. I apologize. I did one minor thing wrong. Just one? Just one. Uh, <laughs> where are they? We're not supposed to be dead. That's what he did wrong. Yeah, oh. totally. That's, that's absolutely what it was. Uh, the picture that I directed you to was them in their actual pure form, though. No, this is page 300. My, my bad. Oh. They're in, they're in slave mode here. Oh. <laughs> you said 300? Yes. I regret this. Yes, you will. <laughs> They're anthropomorphous with supernaturally slim and tall bodies, very tall. Uh, their futures that were clearly once beautiful have been distorted by operations and biomechanical modifications. They wear armor of smoke-colored glass, which looks as though forged to fit them. Uh, long spikes penetrate into the spine, culminating in that halo around the back of the neck. You can see through the smoky glass to the nearest ones and see skinless muscles with parts of the glass, some 
fiber optic cable, some just jagged pieces intertwined into the muscle fiber. Well, that can't be comfortable. Organs are woven into the armor via tubes. <laughs> All right, so they're really hot. That is that is not how I would describe certain things, but it's Amble. Just about everything is hot. I guess fair. Well, clearly these guys know their way around. So I don't see why we don't ask, you know, one of them for help. I mean, I can be because can be very they're convinced. literal harvesters. The exact same moment that you say it, your twin says, I don't see why we don't ask one of them for help. Again, maintaining eye contact and you forget what you just said and what your idea was. I'm going to lean over to Tracy and think I'm whispering conspiratorially, but it's actually like normal volume. Should we kill the twin now or later? The twin um, is a natural. The, the twin seems to be a, a potential use at this time. You don't know why they're saying to kill the twin because you don't remember anything weird happening, Amble. Yeah, let's not turn on each other now. We gotta all have to work together. I'm not. Oh, I'm fine working with Amble. I'm just the that thing. It has a name. Oh, Amy. Okay. When it says Amy, when he says Amy, it says Amble. Oh, Amble, you can't remember your name. <sighs> um. So can we revisit that thing I just said to Tracy? <laughs> Well, to you guys, they just said each other's names, and then Amber looks slightly confused. He doesn't necessarily verbalize. He forgot his name. Hey. Uh, well, do I have an understanding of what's happening? Go ahead and roll. Act under pressure. Okay. Would you say this is being confronted by the supernatural? Uh, yes. Uh, 10. 10. Success with complications. So, lose one stability. <laughs> but, uh, I'm and sure you're a fan of science fiction, right? Do we still have the stability damage from last? Um... Anything you had when you were alive is gone. So essentially, you start full. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. Then. Oh, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a you're a science fan. fiction fan, right? I'm sure of you've what? seen Doctor Who, right? Yes. Yes. I'm Remember very that episode on the here. planet of diamonds with that thing that took his voice? That's what's happening to Amble. I'm more of a Tom Baker, <laughs> Eccleston, Doctor Who. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. High five for that. <laughs> for sure. I love Tom. It is. It is stealing your words, and when it steals the words, it steals the ideas behind them. Oh. Okay, well, that could be useful. So I turn to it. I turn to Amy. Uh, and I say, um, I don't know if this will work, but I tell Amy, it's like, Amy, stop that. Uh, I have uh, Divine, the advantage. Mm hmm um so i don't know what she is but if she's a monstrous creature i have a chance of controlling her she is a shattered reflection of you oh so okay so she yes go ahead and roll it and if you succeed <laughs> you will gain control of each other jesus whoa that'll be the first time i'll have control <laughs> of myself <laughs> oh my god Oh, I, I hit the roll button. Oh, there we go. 13. Yes, you gain control of each other. You say, Amy, stop that at the exact same moment. She says, Amble, speak more. Amy, go convince one of those things to help us. She just looks at you because she was commanded to stop talking. Because that's how she steals your voice. Okay. So when I say that and I tell her to do that, 
I mm-hmm. will start walking towards one of them. She follows you. Okay. If it's hostile, just push her push her in front of it. Save yourself. Wow, that's going to be very complicated to do given where my mental state is at. <laughs> Are you muted? Well, yes, while Amble is walking himself to death, um, Garnet would like to see through the illusion and try to find um an exit from these fields because I don't think walking is going to do it. Roll it. Roll it. I rolled a success. So I perceive things as they truly are. Nothing changes. But, but now you can go ahead and roll uh investigate? Yeah. Okay. And if you succeed you can ask your questions. Okie dokie. I suck at investigate. I I don't even know. Uh okay. I can take that. So success with complications. So I still get to ask one question. The information comes at a cost determined by the GM, such as requiring someone or something for the answer, exposing yourself to danger, or needing to expend extra time or resources. You feel pulled in a certain direction. You don't need to ask a question. Okay. You feel like if you follow your magical intuition, that's to see through the illusion. Yeah. Elysium will pull you back in because that's what it does. You just have to allow it. You just have to find the doorway. Okay. Uh, um, so the problem is you get vertigo, overwhelmed by everything around you, and get confused. Okay. And so pick the I... wrong direction to start. I'm <laughs> like, so I don't know. I feel it, but I don't feel it. Cool. Um, so Annalise and, uh, TJ, uh, kind of just see, like, Garnet, like, focus in, inward for a second, and then, um, kind of, like, reels back, um, almost falls over, but then, like, picks a direction and starts walking. Does everyone follow, or does Amble keep on heading towards whatever those are? I will I will follow. Is there anything around that could be used as a sharp implement, perhaps? Everything here is sharp, yes. Okay. Uh just go ahead and give me a uh violence check. Oh, to I'm yank something it. loose. Violence go. Oh, that is a big old failure. <laughs> Take one serious injury as you maul the shit out of your metropolitan body, pulling something free. I'm also going to grab something. Damn roll. I also fail. Same result. You get your weapons, but you maul yourself on the jagged edges. Two ones. Glorious. Do we do we appear here as like we see ourselves or as we are? You appear here as you truly are. I see. So when you pick up the piece of jagged whatever, you see your reflection. What do you see, Annalise? It's not necessarily what everyone else sees. They see whatever they think you should look like, but what do you see? I think you. Uh, I think it looks like she looks fractured like a mirror, like but it's her face. <laughs> okay. What's in the cracks? Uh, I think like ichor, like red and black ichor is linking, linking her between the cracks. And a single eyeball looking out at you. So yeah, Annalise pauses and just stares at the shard until someone stops her. <laughs> You all right over there? Uh, 
uh, the second the secretary stalks her, she just pulls it down. It's just a shit eating grin. Fine. You both, you all, and so Tracy and and uh, not Molly, Tracy and Garnet. Uh, you both glance over towards Annalise when Tracy yells that question. And you're just in time for you both to see uh, rap names escape me. Bo? No. People hey, my, here. Also, my name has escaped me. Uh, Marjorie? <laughs> Marjorie. And uh, oh shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're all like uh, uh. Uh, I did not put them on the overlay. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Character sheet Reese. time. Oh, yes, Reese? Reese. 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 Yes. You see Marjorie and Reese. Reese is reluctantly following Marjorie with a thousand questions, but Marjorie's pointing, going, I see a door. Opens a hatch just on the ground, and they both disappear into it, and the hatch slams shut behind them. Oh, this is fine. It's that seems par for the course with, the, with those two. So I don't know. Amble, you walk up next to one of the things, and in proximity, the differences are even more glaring. Its arm is like your head to your legs, <laughs> and like like they're super long. The legs are, you know, from your feet to like your midriff. And standing next to it, your head would hit somewhere around its belly button, if it had one. <clears throat> um all right so i like loop my arm around amy's neck and i kind of wave at it with my hand hey it does the same thing but reverse okay that's beautiful <laughs> it doesn't react it keeps doing its function it's not breathing um hey can um I don't know. Can we borrow your halo or something? Uh, I guess I, I'll try divine on it too. I don't know. Uh, okay, get in front of it and make eye contact. And do your thing. Beautiful. We could use some help getting out of here. I guess. Uh, you don't need to roll because it stops when you make eye contact with it and activate a very tiny shard of your lost divinity. And it actually, like, the glaze goes away from its eyes. It shudders a little. And it just makes a raspy noise. <laughs> it drops what it's holding. It's just like a ball of energy that just bounces. And its hands start to do this. Well, slow down there, buddy. And then, like, it hasn't used its voice in a long time. It says more clearly, human. Kind of. Human! And it punches you so hard, you go sliding back 20 feet and hit the ground, and it charges you. Roaring something about, you did this to us. You are no longer gods here. What do you want to do? Amy doesn't go flying. You take a serious injury too. Broke at least three ribs. Okay. Yeah, I've got um, gritted teeth at least. So I guess I can does take, apply. take a punch. Um, okay. I tell, I, I say, Amy, a little help. Does Amble flying back? cause enough commotion for any of us to take notice. Oh yeah, you all notice because it roars human. <laughs> like it echoes across the fields and several other of them stop and turn. And then Amble goes Pew. Then Amy yells, Amble, do something about it. And then charges it. 
TJ is going to grab Amble by the shoulder. Um, oh, or... TJ sprints over to Amble. Okay. Kind of picks him up and be like, let's go. And is going to start dragging in the direction of Garnet. Uh, you can sprint over there, but you're not going to get there immediately because he wandered off. That's fair. Annalise fair. and Garnet do. I will, uh, if Annalise has any notions of what can be done. Asking the uh, wrong, wrong person for rational decisions. Uh, actually, <laughs> well, I just I don't want to be a scene because <laughs> I've been talking a lot. So. Roll and investigate, Annalise. Oh no. Let's see. In this place, perhaps lost memories may return. Lost uh, zeitgeist memories, not individual. Minus one ongoing. The collective memory of humanity. Oh God, my reason is absolute dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I somehow managed to roll a fucking 12 with a minus three. Nice. <laughs> oh, sh shiitake mushrooms. I will uh, point out for the audience, we have brand new occult banes and boosts, should this interest you. What were you going to say, Garnet? Um, I literally, literally have an advantage for the realms of death and that they can guide me out. <laughs> This isn't the realm of death, though, so you're okay. That's how you escaped the, the, the creepy-ass church, though. The cult power house. Uh, Annalise, ask your question or questions. I have one because it comes at a cost. Okay. Um, What's my gut feeling about what I'm investigating? Uh, you don't think this is about Amble. This is something older. These things aren't here because they want to be, but hmm, they think humans did this to them. And you look real close at the glass armor that's less like armor and more like an organic parasite wound through their body. And now you see why I wanted to talk to them. No. <laughs> uh... So your gut instinct is get the fuck out with or without Amble. That's up to you. But don't stick around. You can't take this many of them. We need to leave right now. So what do you want to do while this is happening, Garnet? Um, ooh, Major Boon. I love Major Boons. Major Thank Boon, you, is that group or individual? Group. Uh, group. That is plus 10 to a roll of your choice in this scene only for all players. Cool. So like an additional die 10 that rolled a 10. Um, I, so I am a death mage. Yes. Death magic still works here. This just isn't the death realm. No, 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 I know, but I'm trying to see how I could twist. These are living things. Okay. Um, she looks over at Annalise, because Annalise is the only person who's over here, because TJ went to go fetch Amble. Um, I know you're not in really a good state of mind, uh, to, you know, say you yes, but I need your help. I don't know what you mean. I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, she locks hands with Annalise <laughs> to draw power off of. And oh, no. I'm going to. <laughs> um, and I'm using the plus 10 on my performer ritual. To... Annalise, Energizer Bunny. Uh, yes. to basically 
annihilate as many of them as I can um, to give us enough of a breathing room to get the fuck away. So, uh, you can describe what that would look like, and then I'll tell you the aftermath. You don't have to roll. Okay. Well, if you Jesus. If, you, if you cared to know, I rolled a thirty-one. Oh my god! <laughs> if that was something in your noggin that you wanted to know, um, so she's. She's done this a couple of times because she performs rituals with Sid and Sin. And so she knows now how not to drain people. There were some people in the past that weren't so lucky. Um, so when she like links up hands Fine. with Annalise, there's a little bit of drain um, on her on her body. Um, like you can see kind of like the veins start to to like darken with like the transfer um and then um there's kind of like pinpointed like rays kind of that like go around Amble and TJ to the creatures that are um f coming up on them and then just kind of start to like it'll hit them and then as they walk they kind of slowly start to crumble is how i would like this to go that is what happens. Um, to make sure, yes. Also, I'm very proud of myself because I'm actually saying someone's character's name right tonight. <laughs> except they're gonna come around and be like you actually weren't but i was just being nice <laughs> no you got tj right <laughs> yeah 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 annalise right so Thank we're good you. i'm just gonna start using super irish names and games with you now <laughs> I'll cry, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> I I will literally just at that point have a sticky note right next to your thing on my screen with like actually how to pronounce it. <laughs> I've done that. My brain wants to read things really weird most of the time. As a wave of them are annihilated and more turned to face you. And you realize this is really, really, really bad. Even Amble is like, this is not good. Uh, a trumpet blasts across the sky. And you ever feel the pressure, bar barometric pressure drop really, really fast? It's like that, but three times that. Just a pressure and a sense of heaviness is just instant. Kind of like little... right before the car accident? Yeah. And the sky lightens. And you sense the presence of something like you did with the car accident, but so, so much more. So much more that it hurts to feel just the energy. Hurts in your marrow. Vibrates your cells farther apart than they should be. And you all just hear a whisper echo through your skulls. Be not afraid. I am the lawbringer. And this makes you want to go even more, but all of the creatures just stop and look at the sky simultaneously, like in lockstep. And in the sky, with one of the flashes of lightning, is just colossal Cthulhu sized wings in the clouds, black wings illuminated by the lightning. Has TJ made it over to Amble yet? Yes. Just in time for the lightning strike. Fuck. It's going to be good. Uh, since me, me and Garnet already locked hands, I'm going to charge bravely and stupidly over towards uh, Amble and TJ <clears throat> and just be like, don't worry, I have a plan. Um, 
she's going to, uh, once she gets over to them, hold up the shard again and stare into it and wait for the eye to appear. And then she's going to let the eye guide her out of here. <laughs> I'd like to use my Wayfinder advantage, please. <laughs> I believe that you had decided Madness Mage was where you wanted to go with this? Yes. Glorious. Okay. It is on page 116, I think. Unless you're looking for something else. <laughs> oh, I am looking for something else. I see. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Wish me luck, everyone. I'm Good luck, sure. and thanks for bringing any bad juju that you get <laughs> with you over to where me and Ample are. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine, I'm sure. Everything's fine. Uh... Quick question while you're looking that up. Uh -huh. When uh, Garnet did her thing and of the things that were coming the one that was closest and charging at anvil did it drop that big spear thing he was holding or that it's holding in the picture these don't have that because these aren't guards these are carrying yeah. the balls of energy this um, one's already dropped a ball of energy back before yeah but it's still laying there if you want to pick it up what could go wrong it's fine it's, it's scintillating. It's mesmerizing. It's a strange color you can't find a word for. Unlimited power. Do it, TJ. The eye blinks. And uh, from the sides of it sprout two wings drenched in blood, like bat wings. And it says, I can guide you out. But not for free. Have you seen enough yet? Have you seen enough of the depredations? What heaven is supposed to be like for your kind? Of what they did to you? Of what they took from you? Of what they still take from you every time you die? Look at this. This is them. They did this to you. This place was paradise once and it was yours. Now you're broken and fractured and destroyed because of generations of this being done to the soul that resides inside of you. Doesn't that make you mad? Doesn't that make you want revenge? Revenge is ingrained deep in my bones. Well, then perhaps we can come to an arrangement. I'll guide you out. I don't even help you return to your body in exchange for which you'll be my scythe, reaping my wrath across the world. Deal. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> okay. So, this helps you bypass Garnet being overwhelmed by directions, and you actually manage to, unless the group disagrees, direct them out of the oubliettes. Once you exit the oubliettes, you immediately have no idea where you're going, which is where Garnet's sense of direction takes over. Now you're wandering through a massive, giant, never-ending city like New York times a thousand, except abandoned. You see people now and then and hear whispered voices and furtive shadows moving out of your way but nearly empty streets perpetually at night and everything is rotting and, and rusting and falling apart and you're just wandering the streets following Garnet's direction which is just taking streets seemingly at random to the rest of you. I'm sure it's fine. Is uh, Amy with us? Yes. Okay, good. Priorities.
something like that. You can mark down uh, <clears throat> Annalise. That you have made a pact with the Avenger, the father of the Blood Angels, the Caliph of, Cal Caliph of a Thousand Tears, the Wrath of Madness, God's Poison, Tamael, a Death Angel. So noted. So you can have the scene for a moment while you wander the empty streets, and if you choose for that scene to be you, just you in silence contemplating things, that's fine too. Um. So where the fuck are we going, Garnet? To Elysium. Is that like a club or something? Yeah, it's it's the club of mortals where we can get. Well, I can get a body. I can hopefully find you guys bodies to go back into. <laughs> well, you gotta oh. track mine, Garnet. I don't really know if I'm, like, up for that kind of thing right now. I mean, I'm always up for getting a body, but, you know. Don't, the eye with blood wings promised me my own body back, so I'm good. All right. See? It's all fucked <laughs> up. It's... Sure. Like... Uh, so, then, then TJ and Amble are because at this point I don't know where Reese and Marjorie are. Um, hopefully that old bat can find her own way out. Um, but um, you two, uh, I'm sure we can uh, figure out a situation. Does like when we when we take a body like. Is it a body that someone's already using, or like, like how does that work? Well, in my cases, I usually do this on purpose, and I have a body waiting for me to come back to. Uh, this was not on purpose, so there might be a soul occupying a body. Wait, you just line up bodies to like jump into like are they dead bodies or are they like people who work for you and pr clearly don't get paid enough uh like what's going on there how does that work tj there's always a price but no i have vessels prepared for me this quite literally what I do. And if not that, then one of my corporations, sometimes Manticore, can provide me with specimens and soulless vessels. I quite literally was a test tube baby. So, you know, no belly button and all. So it's fine. So like a clone? Wait, no, you can't take away my belly button. Like, sorry, no deal. I'm that's sure that's that's your that's your that's your, oh, that's your concern. Where I draw the line. I mean, come on. Then we can make you, you a new belly button. You, then you can have a body that has a belly button. Okay. But TJ yeah. See, seems so to have uh higher standards. Yeah, I'll take TJ's belly button too, if he doesn't want one. I, it's... It, it's lower on the priority. Like, I don't want to jump into, like, like, if we can jump into a dead body, why can't I just jump back into my dead body? Because your dead body, and my dead body, and Amble's dead body, and probably everybody else's is mangled from a car crash. Wait. Wait. We were literally alley. assaulted by an angel. We're dead? From a side alley that you walk past, a gravelly, raspy, street-worn voice says, Have you seen Hellraiser? That's how you come back. What's your pleasure, sir? Giggles, and then the loud noise of a banging dumpster. 
I never cared to watch those films, so... Anybody know what he's talking about? They're alright. They're a little dated at this point, and, like, the third one is deeply shit. Like, just real yeah. shit of a movie. Yeah, really. But there's, like, a chick who, like, shoots CD <laughs> out of her head. It's... Yeah, and there's a camera eye. It's really, it's really... Yeah, it's terrible. It's really bad. Someone took someone took the meta, the the metaphor of a camera being your eye too literally and just put it in the movie. Mm. It's it's yeah it's it's bad. Yeah. There's a lot of good metal on the soundtrack though. Some, some you know some Motorhead. I I've done a lot of drugs so my memory is kind of shit. But I think the point was more something to do with like how they came back to Earth in that movie. Well, in that one, they spilled blood on the floor they died in, and then the body reforms slowly and grossly. And painfully. And painfully, yes. I did and that then once. And you have to steal someone's skin also, because you I... don't get your skin back. I also did that once, not not re recommended. I didn't ask the details from the eyeball with the wings, so... Um, well, my first time... Um... After I died, it was required that my followers consume my body, and then it had to be regrown painfully slow. Wait, what? what? So you were shit. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Then your followers... Mm -hmm. Your body, if your followers like, ate you, you and then you had to be regrown, mm -hmm. so they shit you out, and yeah. then... She's Magic? not saying no, which is creeping me out even more. Magic is weird. What can I tell you? Mm. Well, now we know the truth when we say, if we ever have to say that you're full of shit. I oh. wasn't reformed. Somehow you just know, Annalise. Not the other two, though. That the excrement was used as fertilizer and the body was literally grown like a plant. watered with blood and fertilized with the excrement that was once around it. Okay, so there is the, so you're saying there's a guy talking to us from the alleyway? There was. Then like the banging of somebody rushing around or threw her into a dumpster, yeah. The first voice you heard that was more than whispers running away from you in hours. I feel like that's where you should go, Garnet. Into the trash can? That dumpster. Okay. Well, speaking of shit, <laughs> she hops up into the dumpster. She just turns and wanders into a black alley, just immediately out of sight. No light in that alley at all. And you hear banging metal. And possibly a sharp intake of air, like when you smell something foul and then a splutching noise. I mean, I'm not scared of a dumpster. Uh, I, 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 I help uh, Amy in first and then follow behind. Not my first time in a dumpster. Mm. I'll hop in. No, no, these are good sounds. Why are we following this, the first random voice? I'm not. Unquestioned, just following the first random voice. I, I follow voices all the time and it's never steered me wrong. Either. I'm just following where Garnet is going. To be honest, I thought a guy in a trench coat full of belly buttons was about to pop out. Garnet, did you actually go in the dumpster? Yes. Okay. So yes, you turn TJ and realize you're arguing with yourself. Everyone is gone. <laughs> and that's when the shadows stop being so furtive and stop. Start gathering in the street because you're alone. Fuck. You come in? <laughs> Reluctantly goes into the alley in the dumpster. Uh, we won't have to elaborate. We can fade to black, but whatever you consider the most vile thing you could possibly find in a dumpster, it's full of that for each of you individually. Mm. So you have to wade through. And Garnet tells you because she knows. Mega hats. You've got to swim to the bottom. Used <laughs> sweaty ones. That smell of redneck. And Axe body spray. 
I apologize to all the liberal rednecks out there. That smell of... <laughs> don't... Uh, you, don't have, you don't have to apologize for anybody who gets insulted by smell because they smell like Axe Brody spray. Mm -hmm. I had uh, to tell Eldritch Echoes to go throw out one of his colognes because it smelled like Axe Body Scray. Yep, I went to Walmart and bought the cheapest one I could find to see what it smelled like because it was bright red and I was amused. It was bad. That's what it smells like, Amble. <laughs> Moronic sweat and cheap Walmart body spray. By the thousands. What is it for Annalise? Oh, it's like used hypodermics and other oh. uh, used medical, medical supplies. You're getting mauled like in uh, Saw. Two, three? Two, it's through. two. It's two. The pit. Oh, oh God. Cringe. The pit. Potential body horror trigger warning for the audience. I'll wait five seconds. One gets you right in the eyeball. Tracy, what's in your dumpster? Ugh. Skinned cats. Wow. They're still alive. They're not happy about their situation. What is in Garnets? Um, so that's my problem is I, I kinda I don't I don't know what would be gross to Garnet at this point. She has literally regrown her body. It doesn't have to be gross. Disgusting. What disgusts you that would be thrown away? Disgust doesn't have to be because it's icky. Could be because it makes you mad. Like MAGA hats. Um. I guess for, for her, um, it's just like a whole bunch of just like rancid fast food okay and ice cold french fries just so many ice cold french fries the worst just all of the food waste um and then the lid of the trash can slams shut leaving you in darkness for a moment Until you awaken in a dreamscape. TJ, who's your closest relative? Or was? Um. She probably considers her a relative, but she's not, like, actually a relative. So there's this nice old lady, uh, Miss Jenkins, who lives on her block who is a kind uh, woman, goes to church every Sunday, uh, is always part of the community of running any community events in the neighborhood. She occasionally brings him back plates of food from these events. So you're at her house having lemon honey tea, freshly brewed chocolate chip cookies, and a leftover uh, shepherd's pie from a potluck. It's a nice conversation. It's relaxing until she says, you know you're a sinner, right, TJ? You're going to hell. I, yeah, I, I, I've gotten that uh, notion once or twice. Have you ever considered repenting your sins? I'm not ready to, at this point, to stop sinning. What's the point of repenting if I'm going to do it again tomorrow? What's her denomination? That will determine the answer here. Um, she's 
She is Southern Baptist. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well then, we just have to pray for you so that you stop sinning. You have to, to have come to Jesus moment. You have to be redeemed by the blood of the lamb. But since we don't have any lamb, I'll have to do. And she pulls away a section of the wall, revealing just gears turning and turning and grinding like a massive never-ending machine. I'll cleanse you of your sin, TJ. Sticks her arm in it and it starts to grind her up, splattering her everywhere on you. And she just keeps repeating Bible verses about washed in the blood of the lamb while the machine slowly sucks her in, grinding her into chunks. I grab her and pull her out. You do. You pull out the half that hasn't been ground up yet. She keeps talking even after the, 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 what's the half of her brain still in her exposed skull falls out. This isn't. This isn't. You, you can't do this. This isn't. This isn't the way. There, That's there's three ends. Now, I would like you. It's gonna happen to all of you. Uh, go ahead and roll first. Percentile. Tell me if it's low or high. 50 under, low. 51 up, high. This will determine if it's an active attribute or a passive. 62. High. Active it is. Now, you're experiencing what's known as the Shadow of Metropolis the city the darkness of it seeps into you and you don't come back the same it twists you all up inside the obliettes didn't rearrange you the same way you were when you entered so now i'm going to need you to roll d66 tell me if you get 22 30 if you get 22 44 22 and down between 23 and 44 or between 45 and 66 just roll 2d6 and tell us the total, as if it was oh. percentile. So you can't roll under a 2. So you said 2d6? Yeah, so it's like either going to be a 2 or a 66 or something in between. You pick which is left oh. and which is right. I've got a 42 or a 24. You pick. Uh, which, which is better? Uh, actually doesn't ma they matter those are the same 23 to 44 would have been your threshold so uh, that means you take your plus 2 and your minus 2 and your active attributes you reverse them and that's how your body comes back your initial plus and minus 2 not anything you might have leveled up with XP I didn't level either of those up. Uh, so. so what happened to you? Let everyone know. Coolness, it, it act under pressure, is now negative two. Charisma, influence others, <laughs> is now two. Brilliant. You can correct this with XP however you desire, but the nightmare and the obliette did this to you. Your mind is not quite the same when you return. Did we get XP from last session? Five. Full, full sweep. Uh, but you can't reverse them back. You can just buy up the one that got nerfed. So. Amber. Who's your closest family member from your past? Or pseudo family member or chosen family member or... Oh, Amy. Uh, obviously Amy. his sister Amy. Yeah. I mean, we could. It's going to be much worse than having one thing reversed. Um, well, no, I mean, I, um, I don't really have any family members that I, um, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm completely orphaned from my family. I, I don't like them. So you wake up in the dream with Amy. 
Except you're in Amy's head, and Amy's in charge of the body. What's your first impulse when you wake up in your bedroom? Um, you know, I, I take like a CIA shower. You wake up, fling off the sheets, walk into the bathroom, four-length mirror, female anatomy. Reaction? Uh, just blase, you know, this is what I always look like. <laughs> uh, CIA shower, yes. Yeah, I basically just like, um, mm -hmm. yeah, hose off Asshole my- Asshole armpits, yes. Yeah, exactly, the I just get around my armpits and kind of, um, yeah, pat down and just, uh, you know, throw away my panties and put on a new pair. Uh, <clears throat> Amy decides to go commando today. What's your next course of action? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really interested in making all these decisions. <laughs> uh, I'm Amy, I'm, I'm just I'm happy to just kind of go with the flow. Amy takes her time. Um. I mean, to be honest, this is kind of like the perfect outcome. Amy takes her time agonizing over every possible decision until you decide to make one in the head. Oh, it's God. clear she's doing the opposite of what you want. God damn it, Amy. <laughs> um, like, it takes her five minutes to pick a fork. You have three forks. Okay. I don't even, they're I don't identical. Even, okay, yeah, I was about to say, I was like, if this is my place, I don't even think there are any forks. They're just like empty pizza boxes on the floor and a, a mattress. Um, all right, well, I get, I get dressed, you know, I go over to my, uh, dresser and, um, put some clothes on, um, Amy decides not to put clothes on today. <laughs> all right, well, I guess I'll, um, not watch some TV. Okay. And I definitely won't do any drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Amy watches TV. And gets wasted. Now, it seems hilarious on the surface, but you can feel yourself being sucked more and more back and pushed away and locked in this tiny little room where you're just a passenger. And she starts doing everything you don't want to do with your life. Oh, okay. So I'm like, oh, that's not good. So she knows what I want? Yes, and does the opposite. Hmm. Well, that's confusing because I'm not quite sure what I want myself. So, hmm. Which is an interesting look in the mirror when she does a few things and you realize that's the opposite of what you probably want. No, I don't like that. that. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's good. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Fine. Um, I uh, try to assert control of Amy. I mean, that's when. Uh, well, Amy, whatever. I don't even remember my first name. So, Amy. I'm Amy now. So, I try to assert control of Amy. And that's when you're able to wrench free of the nightmare. Now it's your turn. Roll percentile. Okay. Uh. 32. Uh, passive. Now roll D66. Okay. 43. 43. Not bad. Swap your zero and your one. Oh, that's not so bad. However, when you wake up, you feel weird. You disassociate for a moment. Amy's still in there, and sometimes you might be Amy. Amble. We'll figure out how that affects you as, as the game goes on. Amble, you got an individual danger boon. Ooh, nice. Sweet. Let's tend to your next roll. Or... It says next roll. Yeah, and Amy, amiable. Right, exactly. Essentially, Amy exists. It's not entirely disassociative identity disorder. Uh, it's definitely not the Hollywood version. It's more like every now and then we will roll a dice. And if the roll is poor, your better impulses will take over when you're about to do something rash. <laughs> Which is a nightmare for Amble. <laughs> Annalise, your turn. Uh, 
Well, I guess her close relative is her parents. <laughs> Describe for us a happy family scene from your memories. Mm -hmm. Perhaps whitewashed by the memory, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, she's probably uh, watching Saturday morning cartoons and talking to her imaginary friend <laughs> while her parents sit back like, oh, how sweet. She has an imaginary friend. Uh, breakfast carries on until your dad looks at you and says, so tell us about your imaginary friend, Annalise. Look, we even set a place for them, and there is suddenly a place at the table with a chair and a partially eaten breakfast. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Filtered through the lens of the child, this could be anything. Yes. Uh, this, this is my friend Bumby. Oh, Bumpy's very, uh, is this a male, female, or other gendered imaginary friend? Other. <laughs> uh, well, they're definitely a very elegant person. Sculpted features. Very symmetrical. Too symmetrical. Dad tilts his head to the side. That's weird. Shudders a little. Well, tell us about your friend. Uh, well, they've been teaching me all sorts of fun stuff, and she's going to pull up her notebook full of just fun little drawings that are definitely not occult symbols. <laughs> oh, those are fascinating. Like what? And when you're in the middle of explaining one, he stops and looks at the empty spot and says, really, I should? Okay. He gets up and leaves for a second. Your mom says, go ahead, continue, honey. So this is the one to keep me safe, and this is the one to open doors for other friends. Dad walks back in with a handgun and shoots Mom in the side of the head. Now what? Looking at the empty chair. What does small Annalise do? Uh, <laughs> kind of just looks, like, tilts her head over to see Mom on the floor and looks back and it's like, this is a new game, Bumby. I'm not, like, what's this one called? Bumby says it's you were Bumby says this game is called you always disappointed us walks over pats you on the head shoot self dream ends roll percentile forty eight excellent roll d sixty six uh, let's go with, well, it doesn't matter because it's 23 or 32. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Plus two, minus two, flop them. Oh, no. What I does have that do? I have, I have plus two reason and minus two violence now. <laughs> <laughs> Such a reasonable. Mm, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> Annalise is now somehow reasonable. All right, Garnet, your turn. Hey, my reason's at zero and has been since I made her, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, somehow the broken-ass Annalise has more reason than you. <laughs> oh, how the turns have tabled. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I'm flip-flopping between two... Uh oh, this is gonna suck. Uh Sid. Okay. Uh what's a good day with Sid waking up in the morning? I don't think that's stream appropriate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh you make your way to the breakfast table later. Uh What's Garnet's breakfast of choice? That's an interesting question. Uh, it's just a simple glass of orange juice. 
Sid walks in with the orange juice, says, Someone's come to visit Garnet. He's wearing only, like, really tight uh, Speedos. Who? And his boots, Sid. Oh, uh, he says, <laughs> I don't... I don't know his name, but it, but I had to let him in. Had to? Yes. Should I go fetch him? No. Uh, I think I should go fetch him. He turns no. around, and the back of his skull is open. And you can see his brain pulsing, and there's, like, weird squiggly things in it. Um, uh, Garnet totally has the, like, I murdered my husband robe. Um, okay super fucking fluffy boa nonsense mm -hmm. in black and she like takes off after Sid to go find this fucking mystery person who just like opened up his fucking skull you round the corner to your uh antechamber <laughs> to your entryway to your massive house and uh it's just a massive black shadow but you know who it is you can see through the shadow you haven't seen them in a long time. Of course, it's been a while since you died. It's been a really long time since the first time you died and you had to make a deal to get back. Darn it. I believe this is lucky number 13. I don't understand. You've died 13 times. Don't you remember our bargain? <clears throat> Why don't we play nice and you refresh my memory? The deal is this is the last one. Or... You pick one of them. And you know he means your new friends, not Sid or Sin. They're already compromised in other ways. <laughs> And I'll give you a fresh 13. You just have to convince them to join me the way you did. Sure. Mm. I always did like working with you. You were so easy. Here's your toy back. And then you wake up. Roll percentile. Sixes. A regular percentile first to see which gets affected. Oh. After passive or active, and then yeah, 2d6. Oh, okay. Hold on. Uh, Sixty Dan. Nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, 69 is automatic. Swap your three and your zero. I don't even know what my three and my zero are anymore. I don't... Your original three was not actually soul because you bought that up. It was intuition? No. Was it soul? Yes. You can't swap that then. What's your next highest because you no. bought that up? I mean, that would be my three and my zero. My reason would go up to six. And my soul would be at zero. So set your reason to three and your soul stays at three because you can only move the original points or it's not fair compared to what everyone else got. That's swapping the three and the zero. I understand that. Nothing is fair. I'm supposed to die. Oh yeah, we just set, we just set that. We just set how that's going to happen. Oh, so this character sheet won't let you go up to six anyway. Now that they've locked it with all their algorithms. Really? That's yes. new. Yeah, they just did a new character sheet. Now, final percentile rolls all across the board. Regular percentile, not 2d6. A 
Apparently all I can roll is 48 on the percentile. Uh, 96. 30. Okay. Wow, you get you need to get new dice there. 53. Right. So I believe TJ's was the lowest. All of TJ's tattoos have switched sides and reversed. You picture how that works in your head. All right. What did you so get, they, Annalise? 48. Uh, yep, go ahead. Just for clarification, when you say reverse, do you mean like mirror image? Yes, yeah. so they, like, like the a left D sleeve switch to a right sleeve, but also flips. <laughs> so not reverse like the demon becomes an angel. Okay. No, just like the image reverses and switches body spots to the opposite side. What would you get, Annalise? 48. 48. You now need correctional lenses. You're nearsighted. And what did you get? Uh, Amble? Amble? Am 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 Amiable? Amiable. Uh, 53. 53. Uh... From this point on, only the hair on your head will regrow and your eyebrows. Any other hair, once shaved, does not grow back. That saves me a lot of time. Anywhere. <laughs> and Garnet got a 90-something. I got a 96. 96. Hmm. I didn't even think about what I would do if Garnet had rolled that high. <laughs> How tall is Garnet? Uh, he's like five six, five seven. New Garnet is six three. <laughs> In heels. So I'm so I'm six. So I'm like five. It depends 11. on your heel. <laughs> and. And. Uh, you have lost uh, one feminine measurement size of your choice. Or gained. I don't care. You pick. Bigger, smaller. Bigger, smaller. You pick. Smaller boobs because my crop tops never fit quite right. Okay. Smaller tits for better crop tops. That is exactly what I'm writing in my character sheet right now. You all wake up screaming. You all wake up screaming in one of the sub-basements of the, the lesser-used medical facilities that Garnet owns from one of her pharmaceutical subsidiaries. Is it the one that Marjorie was going to buy? Yes. Of course it is. This shouldn't be in use. But now has clone vats to everyone else just steal coffins full of gross liquid that you can breathe. Like a slurry. Uh, you all sit up gasping and yelling and yanking tubes out. Fuck, that was a close one, Amy. Just you. Except in your head. Fuck, that was a close one, Amble, in Amy's voice. Just how that works from now on. Um, Garnet takes her tubes out and she's immediately looking for Sen and Sid, who were the drivers in our little accident. Sid is there behind the glass up on the stand where the control panel is. Immediately stands up and starts moving down towards you. You don't see Sin anywhere, though. Also, the vats that are clearly ready for Marjorie and Reese are still closed, and the lights are blinking, but there's nothing inside except inert shells. They're just like bodies, but there's no distinguishing features. To the rest of you, do you actually look in the other two containers? 
as you pull yourselves out and collapse on the floor with wet slaps. Yeah, I want to see if either of them are aiming. <laughs> Your stability is now reset to what it was before the accident for all of you. Hooray! Except for, <laughs> except for Ambles, it's now one lower suddenly. As the body's inside, no fingernails, no toenails, smooth, no wrinkles, no face, just blank skin. And just like pure white hair, like garnets. Hot. I, I say out loud. <laughs> As you realize, there doesn't seem to be any anatomy, just smooth like a mannequin. TJ's too busy checking. And the checking. ear holes are closed. TJ's too busy checking to make sure everything's still there. This one, you notice your tattoos aren't right. Now, here's an important question. Even. Any of your tattoos have words? Because they're spelled yes. backwards now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it did say love, hate on his knuckles. Well, now it says the same thing, but the letters are reversed and the hands are reversed. So instead, and now, um, let's see, how do I? I'm Evol. not even sure. <laughs> Evol and, and Etta. Etta? Yeah. Etta uh, Evil, because they switched hands as well. Yes. What the fuck does this shit mean? The... Wait, that, 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 wait. What the? This is new to you, too, uh, Garnet. This has not happened before. It's not a perfect science. I think Annalise is going to be like nonstop rubbing her eyes, trying to like clear her vision. <laughs> <laughs> Sid rushes in and says, Oh, thank God, it took so long this time. I was worried. Hands you your rope. Uh, as she gets up out of the, the vat, she now uh, looks at um, Sid <laughs> eye to eye without shoes. For a second, he's not making eye contact. He looks very confused. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. I like it. Okay. Uh, it's because we didn't go to the usual place. Oh. We went up, not down. Oh. Oh, God. He shudders visibly. I don't know where the other two are. Do you want me to keep the machines on? Yes. Just turn them off. No, keep them on. Marjorie is old, but she's smart, and hopefully she knows what she's doing so Reese can get out. Looks at Annalise. Are you okay? I feel kind of weird, like... I think, I think I'm having an adverse reaction to whatever is in these tanks. It's all blurry. Yeah. Checks your eyes thoroughly. It's like, well, everything's fine. Are, like, are these, are uh, like, brand new bodies or something? I told you. Well, I mean, that kind of explains it. I mean, I need some drugs, like, right now. <laughs> Holy shit. I need to be unconscious. Amel. Where's the first place you go when you exit this room looking for drugs? Well, in her house? The No, this is, this is a medical pharmaceutical research facility. Oh. Just like uh, labs and bathrooms. Oh and yeah, I don't know, like a, a mini fridge. They have mini fridges. Yeah. <laughs> you do find a room where they keep the drugs, because that's where the mini fridge is in the pharmaceutical lab. Okay, so somehow you get in. What? Somehow you get in as you swing the door open, because you're still naked. You catch a reflection of yourself in the glass. No belly button. <laughs> God. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, well, I'll look for a scalpel while I'm in here, too. Garnet <laughs> uh, 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 would take Sid over to the side, um, away from Annalise and TJ. Oh. Two questions. Where's Sid? Back at the house. Okay. 
Um, second is more of a statement. Um, something is wrong, not just with them. Something's wrong with me. Something changed. What do you mean? I don't feel connected to that side anymore. That's not good. No, it's not. It's worse than you think, too. What do you mean? Hand you your cell phone. Grabs it. It's been seven weeks since the car crash. The only time that's taken that long is the first time. The first time. We did everything. We did the oblations. We even we, we even sacrificed Steven. I think it's to do with where we went. And because we were all killed by... It was a seraphim. Yes, I know. Did you capture to hear the attention of its master? That might explain it. Out of character, you did. That was the echoing voice. That was an archon, an archangel. Um, I... We may or may not have... When we escaped the Oubliettes and were escaping the harvesting fields, uh, there was potentially a, an archangel. I see. How did you get out so quickly? I didn't die. Pulls up his shirt, massive surgical scar all the way across. Well, that's good. I had to use most of Steven's spare parts. At least he had nice arms. And a strong heart. Anyway. Let's... see how we can fix these other three up with whatever's happened to them, and then get back. I need to find and have a conversation with Persephone. Of course. He spares a moment to give you a very brief hug and cheek kiss because he was actually worried and then he takes off. Hey, hey, where's her stuff? And our belly button. His phone beeps as he's walking down the hallway. He's about to answer TJ. He looks at it, shakes his head, looks back over his shoulder. He hasn't stopped walking. The 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 one, the druggie, he found he found the pharmaceutical cabinet. In case you care. He rounds the corner and disappears. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna get arrested if I leave this place, so do you have like clothes somewhere? Oh, uh there should be a oh wardrobe with the vats, right? The vats themselves have compartments built into them. Okay. Look underneath. There's a drawer. Yeah, they're really high tech. You swipe your hand across a little light, thing slides out. Brand new clothes. Your style, but brand new. Um... I'm gonna go find Amble before he shoots him up, self up with something he shouldn't be. He's probably giving himself a new belly button, to be honest. Amble, roll percentile. Maybe? Probably? Is all of our uh, gear and stuff with our clothes? Uh, some of it's new, but yes, you have the same loadout. You're assuming the new things replace things that got destroyed or lost in the in the wreck. Uh, 83 is what I got. Okay. 83. So, uh, you get there, Garnet, and you see Amber slumped on the floor, legs splayed, high as fuck, just like bottles everywhere. 
unused scalpel next to him, used permanent marker in his left hand, because Amy took over, and a drawn-on belly button. It's actually really well shaded. Um, Garnet kind of peruses. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> uh, Garnet try, kind of peruses the, the bottles that were used um, to see if anything is going to be lethal. Uh, no, he chose wisely. Oh, surprising. But he's going to be out of his mind for hours. Um. Right now, he's barking like a puppy and swatting at invisible things. Cool. Um, your name is Henry right now. Um, and, uh, she'll kind of, like, pick him up and kind of, like, throw him over one of her shoulders. Um, and walk back out to the main floor. Um, does anybody want to help me? Looks at him, looks at the bare ass that's right next to her face. Um, dress him? <laughs> uh, can I roll a perpetual <laughs> victim? Can you roll what? Perpetual victim? It's one of my powers. Yes, yes you can. Okay. As long as Tracy and Annalise don't care if it affects them. That is not one of my lines or veils. <laughs> uh, okay, roll. <laughs> oh, I failed. I rolled five. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, but actually, I have a boost. I'll use my boost. That right? makes it a. Was it Look a what you've done, Drea. Look what you've done. done. That gives it a 15. 15. Yep. Perfect. Even better. Uh, Annalise, you are compelled to take care of this poor thing. Oh. Um, oh, what a... Whew, sad. Uh, yeah, let's... Do we, we help him get, get a belly button, too? Uh, I don't... It's just let's not... She, like, when she puts him him down on the ground, let's just, just don't touch the permanent marker. It should be fine. Oh, that's not, like, I'm not supposed to... <laughs> her knife's in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm not supposed to follow the lines. No. Um, oh, I'm if, sorry. if he really wants a belly button later on, I will pay a plastic surgeon. When she sets him down, that's also when you notice, like a mannequin, no genitals. Garnet, this is when you would remember, oh, right, you have to pick what you want. Oh. <laughs> uh, or any combination of the two. Um... Those will, um, he, he can choose once. You all can. He's able. I think this is something that would, would have come up when TJ was checking himself. That's true. You would have then too, yes. You're too distressed about the no regret. <laughs> That's going to be reversed. <laughs> yeah, you got distracted by your knuckles and just completely... Um, so, you can, you know, change it up. Um, she'll, uh, get the drawer open and pull out the clothes for Amble. Amiable. Or Annalise, your first new power manifests. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ambly. Am Amy Bull, <laughs> Amy Bull and TJ will choose their alignment. Annalise, you're not modular. I see. On demand is necessary. <laughs> Love it. <clears throat> it seems like a good place to take our mid-show break. Then we shall go to break. <laughs>
And we're back from break. The scene belongs to you. I believe we, we get Amble dressed. Yes. And don't give him a new belly button. And we don't give him a new belly button. I mean, I know I know a guy who will tattoo one for him. I, I think we have more pressing matters. We literally don't. Uh, it's been seven weeks since the incident. Oh, my schedule. There's a lot of pickups and drop-offs I'd have to wait. Wait, 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 wait. So your your people collected our bodies, right? So we're not we don't have to worry about like paperwork to not be dead. Or uh, honestly, I don't mind if I'm dead. Um, is that I that 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 would work great benefits for me to be dead. In quotes. Uh, I would need the storyteller to tell me one way or another. <laughs> What's the question? Uh, are, are we are we legally dead is the question. Or were we or grabbed by Garnet's men and so that we didn't get reported to any particular body that were dead. It was covered up. Okay. Alright. So, obviously, well, you guys are more than welcome to stay um, at my house or wherever you feel comfortable. Um, Annalise, you do have your new home. <clears throat> I, I think, I think I, uh, I I'm, I'm I have some vision stuff that we should address at some point. Not now. I mean, I like she, she does literally this. Like, I I can see these. Um, I could um have an optometrist stop by in the morning. Super. That that'd be great. Uh, she uses the good old dial a doctor and schedules an appointment for the morning. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, to be rich. <laughs> uh, it has its uh, it has its perks. It also, you know, puts a target on your back sometimes. So, um. Let's just all go and regroup. Um, we'll get notified if Reese or Marjorie return. Um, so, uh, I guess. The day passes. Nothing happens except Annalise has glass. PJ would have uh, gone in checked um to see if he's been evicted from his paid by the week apartment it was paid up and uh checking with his old boss to see if he's been replaced if somebody else is making pickups and deliveries uh you weren't replaced, but somebody was doing your job for you. And your apartment wasn't paid for by Garnet's people. Do I know who paid for my apartment? Anonymous. Uh, yeah, um, he's gonna move. <laughs> With what cash? You're not fired, but you don't have any jobs lined up. Uh, I've 
if everything that we had that was on our person was replaced in uh he hadn't gotten rid of the cash that garda had made him ah yes you can get whatever place you want then uh he is no longer going to be in living in a shitty by the week rental in long beach uh he is now in a shitty by the week rental in burbank Definitely an upgrade. Better than Huntington Beach. <laughs> uh, question, speaking of money that, well, I didn't, I didn't get the money I had from Garnet. I robbed Persephone. <laughs> Do I still have the Persephone books? <laughs> yes. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, as as Annalise like flips through her wallet, oh, um, it's just a random thought. Um, uh, what happened to Persephone? Is this her fault that we got killed by a whatever? No. It would probably be the exact opposite of what she wanted to happen since we were supposed to get a spinning top from that crazy cult. Right. So hypothetically, if I stole money from Persephone, that wouldn't be the reason we died. I mean... Oh, Aaron's yawns are contagious. Anyway, um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um... She doesn't seem the type to um, hail down Seraphim on us uh, for stealing a couple of bucks. Um, I know you probably stole more than that. Um, also, I, I'm I'm sorry. I, I said hypothetically. Also, she like just continues on glazing <laughs> over. Um, Seraphim aren't really her bag of tricks um they're kind of from opposing realms dimensions they don't play nice in the sandbox yeah. great right. so what has this cult done while we've been dead for seven weeks uh, we're gonna how do you intend out. to find that out I mean, in my opinion, we were too gentle the last time. We should just grab one of them and, you know, get answers. Um, I think they are the type of cult that, um, the people like to talk in riddles and answer questions with more questions and not really answering. Um, so not really my bag of tea to, like, deal with because... I just might end their existence. Uh, but TJ, that sounds like your line of work. I yeah, mean, I mean, you didn't let me do it when we could, and then they just fucking all disappeared when we were in the basement. So. Um. And like I told you, we were kind of skirting dimensions while we were in that basement, and those people were not people per se. <laughs> Bless you. So when, when y'all were up there, did y'all get any details, contact information, name, symbol we can hunt down? Uh, no, one of them knew Marjorie and definitely wanted to do terrible things to her and was like clutching something awful in his hand and blood was running down. Um, for some reason, she wanted to talk. I guess that's probably a rich businesswoman thing where like you think you can just 
talk to solve all your problems. Um, no offense, Miss Garnet. Uh, none taken. I definitely don't take that approach. I, I solve a lot of my problems with talk. I, I, I mean, that's cool. I don't know that you could talk down a cultist grabbing something sharp and bleeding from the hand. Um, it's kind of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but maybe if we go there without her, and because they, like I said, they seem to know her. Didn't Marjorie say something about? them being someone from her past? I think so. She did not uh, deem, deem us worthy of elaborating. Yeah. Well, I mean, we kind of got cut short with, you know, the sky trumpets. Hmm. Did they do something to cause the sky trumpets? Did you see anything? Clutching strange objects, bleeding maybe um it's all hypothetical at this point but we still have a job to do for Persephone and that is to get the spinning top however if my memory serves me correctly we all had a dream of why we all met and that was at a restaurant where the spinning top would have changed hands. So maybe it's not even with the cultists anymore. I mean, the thing that showed up in our dreams was uh, one of those things from up there, right? Not the same ones we, I mean, not the ones that you, you absolutely annihilated it but like something from up there right um it was something from um it was something was it from metropolis yeah i thought that yeah i thought that's where it took us at the like the end of the dream <laughs> yeah Okay. I don't remember making it there. I just remember we went where we were going to go. Right, right. But obviously, if it, it was taking us there, then it's from there, presumably. So. You weren't you working at that restaurant in, in the dream? Which is weird. No one would hire me. <laughs> um. Does anybody remember what restaurant it was? Yes, I actually had plans to meet Marjorie there. Um, so... Uh, so, does that mean we have to get Annalise a job there? What? No, I'm, this... not, I'm not going to fucking work. <laughs> this would have happened already. This exchange that you would have been hired for would have come and passed. Like six uh, weeks ago. Tyler, I'd like to use one of my six sense holds. Um, I'd like okay. to dis discover or sense a clue or lead. You look up the restaurant on your tablet. It has recently undergone renovations. It underwent heavy structural damage for no apparent reason. I'm just going to turn and show that to the rest of them. Um, so uh, maybe it happened? It would seem so. Uh, so maybe somebody else remembers whose hands was the top going to. It was going to be like a, a mob boss or something, right, TJ? The Doc Union. Uh... The Doc Union was getting the top from the cult. No, he had it on him. And said he didn't have it on him. And then that thing went ballistic in the dream. 
and now something like that. So maybe that thing has it. I don't want to go back to the place we just left. I don't know how else to to know. But, I mean, in the dream, they killed the dark archive, right? Yeah. So if he was an important person in the docks, what? I mean, he had a legitimate front. A dock worker dies violently at a restaurant. That's. Well, I think let's go. Let's go to the restaurant. Let's just do that. Or we can go to the dock. Uh, TJ can use I, his connections. <clears throat> please, please trust in my intuition. All right. It's not the eye with wings telling you this. It's something else. Oh, it's in case the blob right. with tentacles instead. No, it's 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 just. Ah, oh, it's a Look. talking radish. Got it. So, are we gonna get any belly buttons or? Uh, if you at the end of this, once we figure out what the fuck is going on, um, I would be more than happy to make an appointment with you, um, in a, well. I don't even know what the word would be. Um, a top-rated plastic surgeon. You've got a belly button guy. Yes. I mean, we are in LA. That there, that's you yeah. Can't there's... throw throw yeah. a rock without hitting like ten. Yeah. So, um, but right now is not the time. No, I just mean I feel a little weird going to a restaurant without a belly button. No one. Don't wear a crop top and you'll be fine. If I look up the, I'm assuming he would know the name of the dock worker, uh, the, the head of the dock people. Any mention of a, his death in any, from any news outlets or local papers or on the union's website? Nothing in the news, but yeah, died, tragic accident on the docks. On a day that he wasn't scheduled to work. 8.30 p.m. You said that the place had went under renovations? Same day. Same day was when the damage happened. No news about that either. Annalise, what time was the, the thing that went bad over the restaurant? 8 to 9 p.m. So, yeah. So, I mean, we can go to the restaurant. But the guy died around the same time. It could be a cover-up. So, I, I, mean, I mean, like, we can go to the restaurant, but, like, what are we looking to find Annalise out at the restaurant? has an intuition. So, let's but just... Sometimes I just know things. I don't know what to tell you. Let's just see where it takes us. Fuck it. It's better than anything that I got. All right. Make dinner reservations. You arrive for dinner as a group. It is now another day later. Still no Marjorie or Reese. Uh, when you arrive at the restaurant, the dreidel theme is everywhere. It's in the wallpaper. It's in the baseboards. It's on the tablecloths. It's like the mm. end of a movie that some of you think is really shitty that I can't right, think of right now. Annalise is going to, like, not subtly scoot her chair right next to Garnet. I told you so. 
You told me what? Look. I, I don't understand. It's a, it's a top. Why, like, why would they rename this restaurant as a top? That's what a fucking dreidel is. Oh, see, Savannah doesn't know what a fucking, the word dreidel was. So I'm like, eh? Mm. Traditional Jewish toy that is essentially a spinning top. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the table you get is in the same spot as Marjorie and Garnet were in the dream. The menu is delivered. The food is themed to spinning tops. Absolutely. Not all of it, not all of it, but yes, top sirloin spinning in the name of some of the drinks. Name of the restaurant, Michael's Place. In other words, the theme doesn't fit anything with the advertisement of the restaurant. It's out of place. It's it's advertised as a high end bistro. You can still hear the top. Um, okay. Can you try to sense it, or any of us? I mean, look, I, I, what I can do here that'll add to this is if you say point at a wall and say it's in that wall, I can take down the wall. Yeah, uh, is there anything top shaped on the table? Uh, actually, physically 3D, no, but like the motifs on all the decorations in art, yes. Um, the whole restaurant. Do you want to use any of your other powers, Annalise? Um, As Garnet asked if you could sense it. <laughs> the old, so it's it's not an advantage that comes to mind. It's one of my disadvantages. <laughs> Involuntary medium. Do you have to roll anything for that? I do. I do have to roll a disadvantage. Okay. Uh, which I believe at minus two, because I'm always at distressed at the, the highest. All right. Minus two. Can never all really well when I am absolutely boned. Uh, involuntary media. Uh, the entity gains an influence over me. <laughs> GM takes one hold. <laughs> okay. The version of yourself from the dream. You know the screaming dying bystander yeah takes over you are now that character a very confused doesn't know what's going on server sitting at a table with a bunch of rich people but you're dead i will feed you information as necessary sounds good how do you do your mediumship so it's obvious something else has taken over for the rest of them I think she goes ragdoll and eyes roll back and then come back, but they're like, they have that uh, glazed, like literal glaze over them. Oh, fun. Just because of the glasses, you're not used to them yet. What's going on here? Uh... So cold. You recognize them, but they're all dead too, or should be from your point of view. The one with the white hair is fucking terrifying. Summons <laughs> demons. That's what killed you. I think the she demon falls. she summoned. She falls, like, even though she's ragged out, like, tries to, like, get inertia and falls back out of her chair away from Garnet. <laughs> I, I don't... Like doing a slug crawl with her limp body across the floor. Um, I don't... People are beginning to notice. Um... <clears throat> Um, 
TJ, you can act. If not, sit and sin will scoop her, scoop her up. Uh, well, I actually look over at um Ample. Hey, Ample. Do Do you have any of your drugs? Um. What a deeply terrible idea. You mean she drugs the possessed person? Uh. Yes. Do you have any? I mean, roll percentile. My, in my system, yes. On you. Not in, in me. You. No, what? on you. <laughs> I mean, I can put some on me. I mean, what? Well, what exactly are you talking about here? While this conversation is happening, TJ has gone over to pick up a lease. I head over to TJ and Elise, and I try to stealthily give Elise a bump of cocaine. Annalise. Roll percentile first. Sorry, Annalise. Sorry. <laughs> Appar apparently, Savannah has passed on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tracy, roll violence. That is an 18. Nice. We're all keep it together. Did you get on the percentile, Amble? Uh, 69. Okay. Uh, you pull out the cocaine, you go, uh, that'd be bad for her. I want to give her cocaine. I got a Valium. Swallow. Your better nature took over again. It's very irritating. I would like to use the, the boost that we got that I never had a chance to use since that was my second like, Plus 10. attribute roll. So that would make that a 18 as well. You managed to cover it up as allergic reaction. Everyone goes back to their meals. Should have warnings about fucking cooking things it's with running. peanuts. Yes. Yeah, well, you did roll a 69, though, so you can have one stability back. Really? Who, put, who cooks pretzels with peanuts? You are now back at the table, and you, now you're dead and stoned, Annalise, on Valium. I mean, what's the difference, to be honest? <laughs> So now you don't feel like running in terror, but you're not going to sit next to Garnet. Fair. I, I, she'll like she'll just keep like bumping TJ to like move her, like. Um. Nah. Look, look, Garnet look. will take the hint and go like on the opposite side of the table. I. Finn scoots down. Sits next to you, gives you her best. Rosie as crazy dark sun halfling. Hey, it's not a lot better, but it's a little better. Um, we Annalise. Well, the Annalise we know at least isn't in the building anymore. Who did I give my drugs to? Annalise's body. This is going to get confusing really quick. I don't know. You could ask her. I don't think they want uh, to talk to me. None of Annalise. this matters. We're all dead again. How did you... How did you die, Annalise? The thing mm -hmm. that Garnet summoned full of blades and razors on hooks tore you to sheep shreds. She'll do her best to like raise and point. <laughs> she summoned that thing with blades. Right. Okay, oh, there was I there did. was another there was another thing before she summoned that one. Do you remember that? You do. Not nah. worse, but bigger. And it, it was posing as a human, some kind of construction or dock worker. You don't know. That wasn't your table. There was a guy at the table that got killed. Yeah, you're looking at him. His name's TJ. 
It was you. There's, there was a, there's another guy at the table. Yeah, they all got killed. killed. There was one that was kind of a in, in, the important one. Um, he tried to escape through the window. Had an accident. You didn't see anyone escape through the window, but it does occur to you to ask why that matters. No window, but why? Because the guy that was the one that had the thing that we came here looking for. The thing? Question mark would be your question. The thing. The top. Oh, that's still here. It's here. Okay. Where? You only know because your blood is on it. You can feel it. So many, so much pain and misery from all the blood that's on it. Thousands of years of pain and misery and blood. When the monsters were rampaging through the restaurant, they tore it apart. The top fell out of the pocket of the guy who escaped through the window and rolled into a hole in the ground. It was paved over by the foundation of the new building, kind of like that shitty movie I can't think of the name of. Lethal Weapon 3? It's got a 3 in it. <clears throat> okay, so... Can they sense where? Directly under the table you're using, but it's embedded in the concrete foundation. Like, they just poured a new foundation, and it was down there in the hole no one noticed. Um, Garnet accidentally drops a spoon um, and goes underneath the table. It's a very nice polished wooden floor. Like real wood. Not that cheap shit. She would and... like to rot it underneath the table. Somebody roll percentile, see how long the tablecloth is. Annalise, you worked here, right? Yeah, let's do this. 70. It is a floor draping tablecloth. Roll, see through the illusion, soul, garnet, while Tracy asks and at least that question. You worked here. Well, God, you hated this job. This version of you. This job was shit. Court ordered happened? by your psychiatrist because you got by your your psychiatrist got your charges knocked down since court ordered work release court order is there a basement obviously there's some kind of cellar but not necessarily directly under you to you it's obvious gotta keep the fancy wine somewhere garnet what'd you get uh 19 you successfully rot three of the floorboards you could reach your arm down there now maybe stick your head in the hole <laughs> like... there's a gap and then there's just concrete okay um, now that I've gotten the floorboards out of the way, can I sense? That would also be see through the illusion. Where the top is. Success with complications. Tracy and Annalise continue that conversation for a moment while I figure out the complication. So, the, but they're. There's a cellar, and there's there's going to be a nap time where no one's working in the building, right? It's it's not below here, though. Well, right, right, but it, it gets below, and then it gets to the point where we can't go any closer, though, right? Like, if you had to guess how far away from here the cellar ends... Um, she'll like do her best to like estimate with her hands <laughs> it is 18 feet down and 3 feet to the left it's aura is radiant but you also realize when you sensed it you released the aura and something else sensed it too A foghorn echoes across the bay. It sounds a lot like a trumpet horn, though. 
I just fucking got done with trumpets. I don't want any more. Um, the fourth wave of ska. If you relay that information to the rest of them, which is up to you. She does. Uh, yes. If you went her. into the wine cellar, you could bash your way through the concrete to where it's at. You could also try to go straight down. 18 feet? Yeah, I'm not going straight down. If 18 we... 18 feet. Look, if we come back when the place is closed, we can get in, go through the cellar. Little chance of being discovered. Because if we try to do it when they're closed, with all the glass fucking windows around, we'll be seen. Roll. Investigate, not Annalise. Um... <clears throat> I have a decent investigate now, but that's up to everybody. Um, oh, um, sorry, I meant, I, meant, I meant the possessed person playing Annalise's body. Oh. The only person who would know the information that I'm after. Got it. Oh. Uh, 15. Full success. The owners are the same, and the owners always cycle their door codes through their three children's birth dates. Three tries. That's how many it usually takes before you set an alarm off. Don't fuck it up. Try each one once. You'll get inside. Yes, I would relay that. Or I could just flash a whole bunch of money around. Could buy the restaurant forcibly. No, I just meant I could be like, oh, I really want to see your wine cellar, and then you should like leave me alone in your wine cellar. At least your money won't kill us all. This time. Some people might I mean, disagree. I mean, if you... Uh, I mean, I, I don't have proper tools to go through the wall right now on me. You do know, not Annalise. The owners are really weird. Like, really weird. They're your kind of people, Garnet. Oh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in this instance. Insular, keep to themselves, don't make much contact with the outside world, and do not bend on any of their rules. Even for 500 grand. Everybody's got a price, though. Even rigid, not rule benders, you show enough zeros. Fine, we'll just come at night and hope that it's not too late. Something else is after this top. Not just us. That's the complication. Party has to decide. Extravagant again extravagant amounts of money or sneak in and do B and E. Either one's a roll. Uh, not Annalisa. <laughs> That's when the mediumship wears oh. off after your final comment. Great. <laughs> uh, question, do I have memory of what transpired or uh, am I oblivious? You do, but you can still make that final comment you were going to say. Great. Be better, better we sneak in. We don't want to deal with those people. So we'll deal with probably the worser option. And I... also, I would like to burn this place down once we're done, if that's okay with everyone. I mean, it's kind of hard to burn down a concrete building. Oh, it's it's not actually. You can just turn on all the burners without lighting them, and then just put something in the microwave and um, timer. Analyst, oh, I'm oh, you, not, you're just gonna. I'm not gonna ask how you know that. I mean, you don't even. I mean... Oh, do you know a better way, TJ? I would love to learn. Guys, well, maybe this isn't the best conversation to have in the middle of the fucking restaurant. Oh, right. I'm just um, saying, hypothetically. She texts... Oh, I'm assuming um, Sid and Sin are here. They are, and they're just kind of semi-glaring at Amble, who's been super quiet this whole time, because he has made his way through every course, and he's on dessert, just watching you guys. 
Um, she leans over to Sin, and she lets him know, um, we're gonna need some equipment. For you can fit more in without a belly button. <laughs> we're not just gonna buy our way through? Um, Annalise made it seem that that maybe wasn't necessarily an option with these folks. Didn't she make a deal with the bloody winged demon? Yeah, and I made a deal with a shadowy tentacle demon thing, so... We all... Life is simpler when you're a cat. This is... true, I, s I suppose, Sen. Um, though you really hated it sometimes, especially the hairballs, if I recall. Um, oh, 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 well, what? <laughs> what the... I'm sorry, was was that person a cat? Uh, she... He leans across the... Sorry, go ahead. You first. No, here you go. Sin leans across the table. And remember, this is Rosie. He purrs in your ear. Um, she's better now, is all Garnet's going to say. <laughs> what did, did, like, she was a, she was a, she was a people who became a cat who turned back into a people? Meow. I don't speak cat. Neither do I. So, um, let's just enjoy our meal. Not make more attention to ourselves. Uh, and come back at an hour past closing time. Nah, make it two hours. Sometimes people like to work late, which I don't understand. But I mean, the the no cooks like did. the cooks like to do coke in the back after hours. Let's be honest. Um, so two hours after closing. Amble, that's not that's not a suggestion. You show up two hours early so you can do coke with the cooks. For the record, I, mean, I don't want the shit coke the cooks have. I've had probably like mostly borax. Yeah, I've had kitchen staff coke. It's garbage. So you return after dark. Give me perception, any and all, which is uh, uh, investigate, observe a situation. Oh, duh. and then ask your questions. Holy shite. <laughs> Uh, we'll go in order of my view, which begins with Garnet. Um, I observed a situation. I rolled a success. Um, questions. So. And you can repeat questions, by the way. You might get different answers. Go ahead. I'm going to clarify that statement. If Garnet says, what's my best way through this, Annalise can ask the same thing and might not get the same answer. So, go ahead. Um, what currently poses the biggest threat? Seraphim that noticed the dreidel when you released its energy. But it's not here yet, which is odd. Kay. It's been hours. Uh, what can I use to my advantage? Uh... You can't really rot concrete. But, but no, I already thought about that. <laughs> yeah. But you can manipulate Can I somehow suck out the moisture from it to make it brittle? Yes, I was getting at some weird science shit, but that's basically you can you can make it easier for TJ to smash through by removing so not just the moisture but concrete also is stabilized concrete blocks in a building are stabilized by those metal bars those you can rot or okay. weaken or rust okay it's like a metal lattice on a bar yes okay Annalise uh, let's see what should I be on the lookout for the Seraphim will be here soon, but why was it delayed? Maybe whatever delayed it's already here. Noted. Um, you. What's being hidden from me? 
The thing that's already here that you can't see, but you can feel it now. Like an oppressive weight pushing on your soul. Okay. Am am amable. <laughs> oh, uh, um... Oh, Observe the situation. Observe the situation. I failed the roll. Oh, okay. So that means you one. get to ask a question anyways, but I might lie. Uh, here are the questions. Just get to make a, a move against us. Right, and one of the moves that's possible is lie. Oh. There are others, but I usually only use that one. Uh, here are the questions in the Fantastic Fables room. Check your pick. Like I said, you could repeat one, you might get a different answer for you. Um, okay. What is being hidden from me? Something not right about this cellar. Like, you pay attention to detail because what if there's drugs hidden somewhere? <laughs> it's a hot, what if there's a hot person hidden somewhere? And the dimensions don't line up in your head. The room isn't shaped right for the outside. And Tracy. What is my best way through this? What do you consider your end goal for Tracy? Be specific. In this particular scene. In this scene? To get the top and get the fuck out. Go fast, go hard, pull some muscles. And once you have it, run, don't stop. Just grab it and go. That will be what uh, TJ's doing. Mm. Because you had the advice from uh, the flaw, the disadvantage from Annalise, you're able to get past the code. I'm not even going to make Garnet roll. You're able to disable these basic security cameras. And you are now alone in the restaurant. You're not in the wine cellar yet. You can go straight there, or you could do something first. It's up to you. Uh, Annalise is Annalise is going to grab Garnet's arm. Um, there, there's something else here that's stopping the angel from being here. I don't know what, but I can feel it. The it's here. Flicker. Um, she'll, she'll just point straight up, like... <laughs> um, Garnet would like to... Uh, oh, sorry, I misspoke. All of the lights on the block flicker. Soon, only the restaurant remains lit. Go ahead, Garnet. Um, let's get down to the cellar. And I would like to uh, see through the illusion as we Probably. go down there. Success. The darkness pushing through the block is much like what you ran into when you went into the basement under that weird substation. You know the underworld. You've died. The place you pass through even if you end up in the inferno. Uh, the lights aren't going out. They're being extinguished by the darkness of the underworld. Realities are colliding on this entire block. Take one stability damage, Garnet. Okay. But it stops surrounding the restaurant, not pushing any farther. This restaurant is now isolated and alone in the infinite sea of darkness of the underworld. We... The ground shakes for the rest of you and the pressure changes as your ears pop. Um, we're not TJ in Kansas keeps going. anymore, Dorothy? I think it's Toto. Well, probably. I didn't really watch movies growing up. Uh, yeah, so we skip, uh, down to the basement. TJ the hustle, 
TJ went straight to the basement. Oh, yeah. Straight to work with the pickaxe. You hustle into the sub cellar. Which is, like, it is lit with fluorescent lights because it's a restaurant. But they're barely pushing back the darkness. It's also cold and damp. Which is weird. Even for a wine cellar, it's too cold and too damp. I look for, like, some champagne or something. Oh, yeah. All right, I just like, grab. I just, really like, expensive grab one. shit. Yeah, I just grab like crystal, like you know. That's, yep. I don't have any taste, so oh. I pop it. <laughs> I try to shoot the cork at whatever TJ is hitting with the pickaxe. <laughs> you, a cork hits the wall in front of you, TJ. TJ, please make your first violence roll. There are more pickaxes. Should anyone wish to help with a violence roll? Ooh, I would love to. TJ's got a Oh, okay. Um, I, I use um, perform a ritual to weaken the yes. stability of the wall. Roll soul. I'm I uh, uh, drink champagne and take bumps of cocaine. No, uh, for the ritual, you have the feat that lets you bypass not having the right tools. Yes. Think you do? Then yes, roll. Well, I need... can roll regardless. Um... Right, you just don't have any penalties. Yeah. So, um, I rolled a twelve, so I get to choose. Okay. Um, so. Um, so I have a couple options, but so I can either choose that the ritual doesn't become unstable, or um, you have protection from creatures and magical energies for as long as you remain within uh, my protective circle. Okay. Which one do you think would be more? Make the circle and make it the cellar. Like, you have time to chalk out the whole thing and get the whole group. Okay. So I'm going to chalk out the entire cellar. Um, and protect us from creatures and mag magical energies. Uh... You hear an echoing baleful howl, like a dog, like a hound. You've all heard the creepy stories of the black dogs. And if you haven't, you've all read Hound of the Baskervilles or watched some version of it on TV. Black and it's followed by more. Shadows converge around the circle. Why'd you get on that violence roll, Annalise? Oh, yeah, let me do that. A zero. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Violence. Mm. <laughs> Pay a high price for your assault. You hit TJ. In the meaty part of his calf. Fucking asshole. <laughs> With a pickaxe. Take one serious wound, TJ. I... Remember, serious wounds gained in Metropolis are gone. That was a different body. Oh. Okay. I will remove what I have. I had mercury poisoning for Persephone, so... But that's a different body, so it's fine. Yeah, these are brand new bodies with no damage. Well, she'll, same she'll minds, like, though, so stability damage remains. So she'll look at her hands and be like, I'm sorry, I'm usually good at doing this kind of thing. And, like, start backing towards the stairwell. Annalise. Do you? How far? Annalise. <laughs> oh. Roll, keep it together. Oh, no. <laughs> hmm. Perpetually at minus one to keep it together. Go me. Oh, my God. Please. 
please. <laughs> please. <laughs> I, can I go ahead and use my boost that I did not use? Sure. All right, all the 17 then. <laughs> you listen to Garnet when Garnet says, don't leave the circle. Um. Also, Drea just redeemed a yeah. major group boost. Thanks. Thank Plus you, Drea. Again. Uh, Amable. Go ahead, Garnet. Oh, I was just going to ask, um, do I have to keep focused on my spell in circle? Um, and I can't do anything else? Take other actions, but I might penalize you with like a minus two. Yeah. Or a minus four if it's really stressful. But you can take other actions. You will fail the new roll. You will not drop the spell if you fail. Okay. Amiable. Amiable, this whole time you're just chugging champagne going, I do not like this. Like the Nine Inch Nails song. Uh, I then, think after that, Annalise is going to go over and snatch a bottle <laughs> from Amiable and chug with him. Guys. Then everything gets more peaceful. Calm. The room lights up. There's a chair to sit in with lines on a glass table in front of it. High grade shit. Fucking heroin. Pure. Does that appear to all of us? Nope. Okay. Be at um, peace, Amable. I'm here for you. Says a soft voice, and you blink and look up as you consider doing the lines in the original picture I showed you earlier tonight. Graceful being with the weird sand leaking out of the wounds is in front of you. What page was that on? Um, do you have any, you know, do you have any works or anything on you? I asked. Uh, 287. <laughs> okay, do you I have don't... any what? Works. Syringe or something. I'm not going to snort heroin. I'm not crazy. Pulls out a spoon and a lighter and hands it to you. I, I take the spoon and lighter from the angel. Uh, is Anvil saying this out loud to the rest of us? I was going to say, what, what have I seen since I moved right over to Anvil just recently? <laughs> so, uh, TJ's busy. Annalise is pulling a pickaxe out of TJ's leg, so not as busy. Annalise, you can roll see through the illusion. Garnet, not yet. In a minute, though, because we know you're going to uh, succeed. 12, so success with complications. Mm -hmm. Something senses you. You turn. What is Amble talking about? Why is everything blurry around him? Then you hear a soft... Whoosh, and something gritty hits your face, and... What's a safe, ideal place for you? Oh... She lost her innocence in the fucking awful oubliette. Um, I, I think it's, it's probably like losing herself to hedonism after a score, robbing someone. So that's hammered. what you're experiencing. A memory of the best time that happened. Uh, when the same being from 287 appears before you, dancing with you, grinding, throbbing sharing drinks with you really expensive ones on her it's tab of course and elise be at peace all is well tj violence amiable what do you say back now that you've got the syringe loaded that came out of nowhere like a really nice syringe clean never been used it was in paper 16. um you're making good progress it was a bit much, but uh, yeah, I, okay. So I like tie off my arm um, and I put some of the heroin in a spoon and I start cooking it, obviously. Takes no time at all because this shit's pure. It just melts like butter. Okay. Well, I asked the angel if it would like a hit first. You know, it's, it's shit. You of want course. some of this? It takes a hit and reacts what you consider appropriately. Oh, it actually glows a little bit. Okay. 
Um, I guess it's okay to share a needle with an angel, right? That's not weird. You look Suddenly you have a new needle and paper. Clean. Um, okay, so yeah, I take a hit of some of the angel's heroin. This is the best you've ever had. It's immediate. It's clean. All right, I look at the angel and I say, hey, you want to fuck on this? And I use my divine power on it. You don't need to because the being says... Wow, well, great. <laughs> you don't need to because the being says, I would love to be inside of you. Oh, no. Would you let me in? Am I going to have to exercise you? Probably. I'm going what does Amble you. say? You're horny as fuck. Huh? Okay, you'll get your turn. Me first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I start. I start unbuck. I start unbuckling. You promise. My belt and, uh, and I'll, I'll uh, unbuckling my belt as I say that. Do, do you promise? <sighs> If I get to be inside you first, uh, yeah, baby, sure. I'm lying, but. <laughs> <laughs> huh. um, Through my heroin days, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, baby, of course, whatever. Garnet. Yeah. Your turn. See through the illusion. DJ violence. Yeah, one of my disadvantages is uh, sexual neurosis, so it's not like I'm saying no. Uh, success. Yeah. You finally notice as you're dissolving, rusting, weakening iron bars all the way through for J TJ, who's a man on a mission. <laughs> like, you know he's torn at least one muscle. He does not care. Uh, you glance over, and at the edge of the circle, you see the thing. And Amble is floating two inches off the ground, arms outstretched, eyes rolled back in his head as it locks eyes with him. And you also see Annalise starting to lift off the ground slowly. But Amble is being pulled out of the circle. Um. By swirling dust coming out of its body. Uh, well, it's in my circle, so... It's just outside of it. It's pulling Amble out. Well, fuck you. And the horse <laughs> you came in on. Um... It can't come in your circle. We'll uh, see about that. That's why, that's why it had... Jesus wow. Christ. <laughs> that's why it had to result, resort, resort to illusions. Because it couldn't just come in and kill you. Um... Can I try? What's down here? So much liquor. Glass bottles, wooden shelves, uh, fluorescent lights, uh, a spare pickaxe that was once in a leg recently. Uh, uh, Sid, because you don't go anywhere without Sid. Um, it's gun. I wonder if the gun works on this thing. Do you tell Sid to shoot, or do you take it and shoot? Um, she holds out her hand for the gun, and she tells Sid to go grab the two fucking numbskulls. Sid moves, you have the gun. It is a desert eagle. Um, Garnet doesn't use guns, but she... Really big and heavy. Oh, yeah, no. So she it's takes from it with point of view, yeah. both hands and points it at this thing, center of mass. She's not trying to be fucking fancy. And she's like, I'll give you an option to leave. It looks up at you. Amble starts to 
slowly float to the ground, but not quite touching it. Hmm. And then the entire wall disappears. Just like ripped away in brilliant white light and the searing tinnitus sound. And you just see a pillar floating there. It's part flesh, part marble, part spinning bands of metal with too many eyes and a trumpet noise. That's where we pause until next time. Trumpet. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> As the horrid I... visions of reality fade and the comforting safe lie descends upon us once again, we wish you a good evening and hope you return to experience this tale with us in two weeks, as we won't be here during HorrorCon. But until then, the Razides of Warple Tales have lots of awesome things. So many sights to show you. Tomorrow, Hunter the Reckoning V5. Come check it out. Character creation. Not only are we going to show it off, my story is going to involve flashbacks to the 90s. So we're going to make V5 Hunters, and we're going to make V1 Hunters, and we're going to compare the two see how it looks. If you're intrigued by that, come see how that happens. On Monday... Ravenloft, Curse of Sonia, Curse of Strahd, Revamped, Genderbent. On Tuesday, or later on Monday, Delta Green the Watcher, part one of Eric's tale nears its violent end. I'm sure all will be fine. On Tuesday, Session Zero of Corio Coriolis, the Third Horizon. On Wednesday, G.I. Joe, the Emerald Obliette. On Thursday, Dark Sun, uh, Road to Uruk. On Friday, uh... At 1 o'clock, come check out Rachel running our first show of HorrorCon, uh, St. Marmo's Home for Wayward Girls. And then later that night, perhaps, if Steve's up for it, Traveler Session Zero. If not, that'll be next week. On Saturday at 9, I will be running Cult Divinity Lost, a one-shot called Divided We Run. On Sunday at 9, I will be running a one-shot of Don't Walk in Winter Woods called Mycophile. I'm sure that'll be gross. Come check them all out. You can find me next, running Session Zero of Hunter the Reckoning version 5. Cast! Tell everyone how that made you feel and where you could be found next between now and our next session. Oh, um, uh, I'm Calvin Khalil. You can find me at Khalil on Twitter and on the Storyteller's Vault where I have books. Um, I was playing Amiable, uh, the doll, um, whose better nature is a tentacle monster i found in a you know a death plane um, tentacle monster uh for, former yes hentai tentacle monster correct yeah i wouldn't want to skip that part uh and i th think i on wednesday is the next game i'm i'm in it is yes. you're gonna have to deal with a lot of cobra hope you like snakes Oh, no, it's a, it's a mage game, I think I'm in, right? I'm not trying to have a mage game. Oh, you're in the Patreon game. Yes, yeah. we will be doing a soft reboot of, because we've had a slight cast shift and a lot of delays. We'll be doing a soft reboot recording of our Patreon Mage of the Awakening game in the secret world. Uh, Mare is exiting, but Annalise is joining, or at least some version of Aaron. Yes. Who still needs to make a character. <laughs> Hello, I am Zachary Naldry, he, him. I can be found at the Bird app and various other places on the internet as Zach Rules, including my website, ZachRules.com. Uh, if you're at a social media site that I'm not, that some uh, Zach Ruiz shows up, you can try Zach Rules Dice. I, I haven't been using those recently, though. And if you that doesn't work either, you're on one I don't use. It's probably Snapchat. And there's a good reason for that. Snapchat knows what it's doing. Um, the next time you'll see me is like two weeks the next time we do cold. Um, Aren't you somewhere at Horicon though? Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. Um, and uh, go check out uh, the the my first uh, published uh, freelance writing thing that I got through Third Eye Games. It's Pit Primer Summer Camp. Just Did came you out. hit a tier on something too? Um, it's been a week or so. It's been a while. Mm. I've got a... Uh, I don't know. He's got lots of stuff. 
I have a website. It's all listed there. You can go check it out. Zachrolls.com. Speaking of books, I'm going to jump back to uh, Amiable for a second and mention uh, you should check out the phenomenal Player's Guide to the Savat that he helped write that we gave away uh, five copies to <laughs> during our uh, Pride charity event. It's really good. And if you show up at Gen Con, maybe there'll be even cooler copies for you to get your hands on. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, the black hand playing the Savat. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Check it. Check it out. Oh, me. <clears throat> Hello, I, I am Arian still, uh, and you can find me at Greg at Pilgrimage everywhere. I'm on a little bit of a hiatus from, uh, not officially, uh, from my own channel currently, just to, uh, you know, world's a nightmare. Uh, just, you know, got to spread spoons across days, you know. Um, so uh, you can next find me back here on Monday for uh, Delta Green Watcher, uh, and I, I, I I'd never intended Dominique to live this long in that game, but Roll20 fucking loves me, and I have so many clutch rolls in that game, it is ridiculous. Uh, I think I'm going to survive for the, the second round of Delta Green. Um, but yeah, uh, and then I uh, Wednesday, uh, as was for aforementioned, I will be recording the uh, Mage the Awakening Secret World themed game, and also maybe uh, me and Dre have not discussed it yet, but I might be doing a collab with Drea before that and then hopping right into that. Mm. So we shall see. Hey, uh, so I am Savannah. You can find me online as Miss Miss Emo Fox. Um, the, you are watching live in slow motion the soon to be demise of Garnet. I hope you all will enjoy the journey not sure how many episodes it's gonna take um but it will be it will be gruesome it will be exactly what someone uh bargained to pay for um and it will be cruel um only i know how many and i've told no one not even me and i sleep next to him so um so yeah um you will catch me tomorrow for session zero of hunter while i build two tunes um have not given a single thought in my little brain about what <laughs> i'm gonna play in hunter um i have some ideas um mostly because i've been uh watching um hellstrom um on whatever fucking streaming service i have i have them all so i never know anymore um but uh so you might see a version of a very pissed off not priest exorcist and some awesome fan fiction might come to light. Oh, yeah. That too. Excellent. And on that note, come check all of them out in all of these awesome places. Come seek out uh, Salubri MD on her channel streaming whenever she can and playing awesome games with us. Come check out Critical K. She is all over the place, often with Zach on other channels uh, and is a dice goblin everywhere she can be everyone will be back next time we play in two weeks come see us then just remember don't fall for the lie open every door walk down every staircase good night <laughs>